Hello, I'm back again. Welcome to week 5 of our Open SAP course Build Mobile Applications with SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services. In the previous week, we talked about cross platform native app development. In this week, we'll go further with native app development. At the end of the week, I will also do a small wrap up of the entire course. OK, now let's get started with this Unit 1 Introduction to Native App Development. The challenge. The challenge we have in native app development is that providing exceptional custom user experience is sometimes just the minimal requirement that our users bring on the table. Also, we want to put into our mobile application the latest and greatest technology that is available. Our solution for this is to use native app development. Here we have the option to use a rich set of framework and external libraries, access and direct access to the OS-specific features, as well as a very efficient development environment, and it also a very direct access to device hardware, which in enterprises is often a requirement as well. Well, and since we are directly running on the operating system, it's much easier to integrate third-party libraries as well as hardware into, into our solution. A typical example is an external laser scanner that you want to use in the workshop, on the workshop. Good. We have discussed already a couple of development options that we include in the mobile services. We have discussed the mobile development kit, we have built SAP mobile cards. Today we focus on the SAP Cloud Platform SDK, which are basically running on top of cloud of the mobile services, on top of the cloud uh, mobile services. Here we will focus on the Android SDK for the remaining of the units, uh, but be sure that the iOS SDK is a vital, plays a vital role here as well. Native front-end development brings a lot of advantages to the table. So we have the best look and feel and the native look and feel. That means the user of a given app directly feels at home. We also have access to the best possible performance that the device can offer. Instant access to new device information, uh, innovations is also at our fingertips. This makes native app development very good for providing the best user experience, but also for providing offline applications that is being used by a worker in the field the whole time of the day. When your app requires a native framework that you want to use, it's much easier if you do native app development. Examples for good use cases for native app development here are field sales services, self-services, and consumer applications. The required sales skill set differs depending on the platform for Xcode and Swift. For the iOS platform, it would be Xcode and Swift. And for Java, for Android, it would be Java, Kotlin, and related skills. We offer two different SDKs for native app development. One is the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for iOS. And it basically consists of four components. One is the SDK, one is the so-called existent, assistant, and then we have the Fiori mentor. These three software components will implement the SAP Fiori for iOS design language, which provides a set of reusable UI controls for your native applications. On the Android side, we offer the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for Android. It also consists of four parts. One is the SDK itself, which then contains the Cloud Platform SDK wizard and also a version of the Fiori Mentor. All these three components make sure that the SAP Fiori for Android design language is being implemented correctly. The tools and skills you need for developing natively depends on the platform. For iOS, we have Swift as the programming language. We do need a lot of good understanding 
about the integrated frameworks and the operating system itself. But we also need to know about the distribution process and how to distribute a mobile application on the respective platform. It helps to have an understanding of the cloud platform SDK for iOS if you want to use it as well. And the IDE, in this case Xcode, is also important to understand, to be efficient. For Android, it's a little bit different. But here again, we have a programming language. It could be either Kotlin or Java. Kotlin is the new kid in the house, the de facto standard nowadays. And obviously, as well, you need to understand the frameworks that are provided by Android. Also here, we need to understand the distribution processes and the requirements for this. And if we use the SAP Cloud Platform SDK for Android, we need a common understanding of that as well. Typically, you would use Android Studio as a local IDE to develop natively for Android and the Android SDK. There are a couple of topics that you would see cross-platform, so to say, and that you know from all the other development projects as well. Here, they could be a little bit different, but topic-wise, it's always the same. But for mobile, we have special requirements for building and integrating or creating a continuous integration tool chain to also support native app development. We also need to make sure that our dependency management works well. Our source code management is a little bit, maybe a little bit different to what you have been using before. And here, a new topic of device testing comes into play. When we have an application, we cannot just simply test it on a device, we, uh, on, on, a, on a simulator. We also need it to test it on the device. This is crucial because the code running on the simulator may behave differently on the device. This also makes debugging a challenge because you need to debug on a specific device sometimes if you run into issues. Integration with this mobile channel can also be a challenge and the user experience and user interact in interfaces on native screens are also different to what you may know from web development. So here we have special requirements and the security is definitely a challenge because not it's often the case that the app is in the hand of the user without any control of IT departments. Well, so what brings the enterprise into mobile app development? And here we can say that there are four different areas which we need to look at. First, usability versus security challenges. You all know how two-factor authentication works and how difficult it can be if you don't have your phone on the, at hand and need to grab the uh, individual login token for a particular application. This is on the one hand side the requirement for strong security and on the other hand a multi-channel approach for security. So we need to consider this as well. Innovation management. You want to have the latest innovation available in your application to provide it to your users. This is a challenge and need to be managed, particularly in the enterprise context. Staffing and skills. You, for, for staffing, you obviously are the developer or you are part of a development team. But there are many people around you that also influence the development of the team, specifically in enterprises. We also need to comply to enterprise standards in your organization. And this comes also as an external requirement to many, many teams. What is the software development style in that particular enterprise? So in order to solve that issue, we as SAP Cloud Platform Mobile Services want to provide an enterprise-ready layered security to you so that you can look at the business aspects of your application and focus on those instead of 
going into the details of enterprise and security. Also, with the whole feature set of the SAP Cloud Platform, we want to provide you common features that you can reuse and quickly adopt instead of developing it on your own. With our strong partner ecosystem, we can help you and your project to be successful. And with all the tools we provide, we want to make you as efficient as possible. So in this unit, we started discussing about the native app development and saw the challenges that app development in the enterprise context can bring. This concludes unit one of week five. The next unit will be about creating a native app using the wizard. Thanks for listening and see you there.